Okay, <laughs> let's get comfortable. Welcome back. Let's continue with this beautiful style of unedited videos. As I get comfortable, I'm literally sitting on my bedroom floor. And let's just pull that down there. And again, I'm trying not to apologize for my face being a bit squiff, <laughs> but I can't help it. I'm, I'm so self-conscious still. It seems like there's more swelling. I went for another run today. I went yesterday. I've just uploaded my product review video. Um, so that you guys might be watching as I record this. So I'll probably upload this one tomorrow or Friday. But I went for another run. So I think sometimes the body creates extra inflammation. And then I just talk funny and my face is a bit more pulled and skewed. Anyway, I'm trying not to apologize. But I do feel... Ugh, you know, you would too, if you, if you had something like this happen, you would feel, I'm trying not to let it get to me. I'm trying to be positive. I'm trying to have faith that there is, a, you know, I don't believe things happen for a reason as in, I don't know, actually, this is a very good discussion. Here's a good point is, um, oh, that's hot, <laughs> is when things happen like illness, cancer for children, death of a loved one, maybe we get divorced, is there a greater reason or are we humans the meaning-making beings that we are and we find a spiritual reason for that thing to have happened? You know, I'm looking for the lesson in this. One of the lessons is I will never take my smile for granted again. I will never, never, never take my, my, the muscles in my face <laughs> for granted again and the way that they move. I will never take, I mean, my face always was a little bit asymmetrical. In, if funny enough, in the way that it has pulled, this lip was always a bit more down. Then this one, this nostril was always bigger. And I used to sort of obsess over the, this minor, minor asymmetry. And now this has happened. It's almost like as if life, <laughs> God, the universe has given me this to say, you were, you were beautiful as you were. So it's like, it's, it's giving me gratitude for what I didn't see back then. And if I get it back, I will be so, so, so grateful. Anyway, as I sip my coffee, oh, it's hot. I've just, just made my, my cup of coffee. Um, I've put a bit of collagen powder in my coffee. I don't know if you guys do the same, but I'm thinking, I don't know if collagen really does anything. I, I see no difference. It's hard to say, isn't it, with skin? Um, like... What looks, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if anything looks better. I have been out of the sun more, and from that uh, aspect, my skin looks better. So I don't know. It's hard to tell. I mean, my skin looks its age, and I think it will continue to look its age as I age. Oh, speaking of um, age and skin, I don't know how my brain jumped to hair, but oh, because I scratched my head and I was just feeling how silky soft my hair is. I've used my microkeratin um, conditioner that I love. It's actually the mask. It's the one in the tub. I did a whole video on that. I will link to that in the description box below. Um, I did a product review and I think I made a separate video. I don't know if I've taken that video and made it private because it didn't do well. And, and I was sort of trying to see if maybe if I just took down the videos that only have like under sort of 60, 80 views after about six months, whether I should just remove those videos so, so that they're not like weighing my channel down. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing here on YouTube. You know, you, you if I watch all the YouTubers advice videos and I've done Ali Abdul's YouTube Academy, PTY, part-time YouTubers Academy, you know, you get told all these things and it's very, do this, check analytics, 
do this for the money, your thumbnail, your title, clickbaity, blah, blah, blah. And yes, clickbaity titles do work. Beautiful thumbnails, they do work. However, I do not like watching the style of videos that are so in your face. What, what I really don't like is when the, what's it, the, not the commenter, not the comment, the, the announcer, not the announcer, the YouTuber, but what do you want, what do you want to call it? The presenter or whoever's talking to the camera. Ah, old lady brain. When they shout and when they've got their, their points and they are so trying to be quick as well, which is fine. I, I don't want them to drag on and on, but sometimes it's, it's too much. It's like, it, it leaps at you. It's, it's like an assault on your ears. Uh, when also when there's too much background music, I hate that. I don't know if you guys hate that. So there's so much. And also editing styles, some of them are annoying. Some of them have changed over the years. But there's so much that I actually don't like. <laughs> and I've tried all these different things. And it just doesn't feel, sometimes it just doesn't feel like me. It feels forced. So here we go, back to the, just back to me. Me being me in front of the camera, that's the only way to be. I have tried. I have tried a million ways. And the one video that I took off was the one that, like the one that really where I got so many subscribers, was the one of me walking around my block just giving practical, genuine weight loss advice. But it did have a clickbaity title. I, I won't lie. It was called, This Video Will Make You Skinnier. I'll link to it in the description box below for those of you who are new here. And if you'd like to check that video out, um, and that's where I think so many of you have joined wanting the weight loss advice from that video. But, and I won't disappoint, I will still give you weight loss advice. But that video was true to me. It was me, literally, we'd gone out for a breakfast and I got back and I was feeling like I needed to burn off the breakfast calories or whatever. And so I went for a walk around the block and I just kept thinking as I gave the advice, um, what is the most, like, if I really had to shake someone and say, just, this is the advice you need, like, just do it. What is the, the, the stuff that I know, that I know, that I know, that, like the ultimate video that they would need. And that's how that one came out. So it wasn't planned, it wasn't scripted, it was just off the cuff. And it did so well. So I think in YouTube, maybe as in life, if you break the rules, you sometimes see success. And yet I've tried to replicate that video and <laughs> nothing has worked. <laughs> nothing did as well as that particular video. It's strange. So I've tried to actually make videos exactly like that. Walking around the block, giving weight loss advice, with a, a pretty decent clickbaity title and it didn't, it didn't do as well as that video. So I've learned, I've learned a lesson in that I have to make the videos that, that come out of me, that want to come out when I have something to say. And it has to be, I want to share with you because I feel that there's value in, in the thing that I want to share. And as I go about my daily life, and my life is very boring, <laughs> it's very normal, but as I go about my life and I, I use a product or like collagen powder, put it in my coffee, I think of you <laughs> and I want to tell you. And speaking of you, hello, Claire, Claire Singleton, thank you for all your comments. And we do, we sound very much alike. Lala, your handle name is Lala Blotz. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for the continued support. And there's a few more of you. There's one handle name. It's a bit long, and I hope I don't butcher that it's Gen X in the wild or something like that. Um, some of the handle names or usernames are a bit more difficult to just remember, but I read each and every one of your comments. I read your comment. Usually what I do is I wake up in the morning. Often I'm awake before my partner, and I'll go downstairs and I'll make my coffee. It's, it's Jacob's coffee. It's nothing fancy. Um, and I sit and have my coffee and then I read the comments. I don't know if that's good or bad, but it's what I do. And then because it's 
quiet. I have the house to myself in the morning. Well, I mean, obviously everyone's in the house, but it's like my time. And then I read the comments and I, I try and answer them in the morning. If I feel too rushed to answer them, I will wait. Sometimes now also I'm going to not, can't answer every single one, which is fantastic. I'm getting to that point, which is wonderful, where maybe, where maybe I, I won't reply to each and every single comment with a detailed reply because, sure, you know, I've also got to make the videos and I've got to be a mom and I've got to cook, but I do, I read and I take in every single comment. So back to what I was saying, as I go about my day, I think of you. <laughs> I think I should tell the ladies this. If I were watching a YouTuber, I would want to know what things they really find useful, what things as they go about their day are they thinking of, what things, you know, we are all, I feel like all of us, like you guys who are watching me, we all have the same daily struggles, psychological worries, issues, um, you know, and I know, I know, women worldwide, we, we want to look our best, we want to weigh what's optimal for us, or, you know, we, we worry about weight loss, we want to look fashionable, but comfortable, especially over 40, <laughs> comfort becomes more important, we want to be feminine, but we still need to, I mean, it's just the way the world is going, we need to also earn money, we need to be partners, mothers, um, sisters, daughters. So I think we all have the same things in life. Just, uh, I really hope that the garden guy does not start mowing the lawn. He was mowing and then he stopped. I think he's on a tea break, but if, if you hear sound, I will try and wrap it up because what happens I've noticed when there's a lot of background noise, even though I have the background noise canceller on, it just creates this like this, Maybe it won't bother you. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but as I go about my life, I think of, as I use something good, I think I'd love to share that because I want to know that from other YouTubers. This is the way the world is going, is that we don't, especially after COVID, we do meet up with our friends. But like when I meet up with my best friends or my circle of friends, we just don't have the time to sit and like say, shit, you know, I really found this amazing shampoo or conditioner or face cream or nail polish or whatever, because we, we meet maybe once every two weeks, once a month, once every six months, once every year. One of them, one of my friends is in Stellenbosch in Cape Town. So when I saw her recently, it was for, what was it, half an hour? That was so quick. It was just like catch up, catch up, catch up. And then, you know, you don't get time to not like when you were young and you would go shopping together and you would have sleepovers and braid each other's hair, which I want to do for another video again. That looked cool. Um, we just, so I get recommendations from YouTube and uh, not always, not always to the best um, outcome because sometimes even if somebody else enjoys a thing, you won't like it, like hairbrushes. So I went through this phase where I decided to try some hairbrushes that, again, she's my one of my current favorite YouTubers. I think maybe, she, I probably will enjoy her long term, Lisa Lisa D1. She was mentioning hairbrushes, so I think I ordered two, one or two of the kinds she liked, and I wasn't wowed by them. But let me show you the one that I use all the time. Actually, there's two, one for when my hair is wet, one for when it's dry. Again, you may or you may not like it, so don't rush out and buy it, but if you are in the market for a new hairbrush, consider it. I'll show you. And oh, my hips are tight from my running. I've only done, oh, geez, old lady. <laughs> That's how you know you're getting old is when you go, oh, when you sit down and when you stand up. So this hairbrush, very inexpensive. I don't even know if you can get it overseas. I bought this from a supermarket. At, it's called Pick and Pay here in South Africa. This one here, free, it's upside down, freestyle, freestyle. Super soft bristles. They've got like um, longer plasticky ones and then like hairy ones. Sorry, there's all hair in there. But I have three of these because over time, 
they splay just like a toothbrush, but it's the gentlest hairbrush for my very damaged hair. I love it. And then the one for when my hair is wet. So this is when my hair is dry. And this, the classic, the tangle teaser for when my hair is wet. I love this thing. Even when my hair is dry, it's fine. I love this thing. Oh, so nice to comb my hair in the viewfinder. <laughs> um, so for wet hair, I find this the least damaging, especially if your hair is bleached or highlighted or processed or anything like that. Those two brushes are my favorite. Okay, but I had a, I had a topic <laughs> that I wanted to talk about. Um, besides, I'm getting back into running, as you can hear. And what's nice is that I've noticed when I run, I do tend to make slightly healthier food choices naturally. So without exercise, I've slowly devolved into eating worse and worse and worse. More cake, more sugar, more chocolate, more comfort foods. Um, I don't know what it is about me, but if I'm active, like when I go for a run or I go to the gym, I come home and yes, I will be hungry, but something about the activity balances me and I will like today I did eat okay <laughs> I ate very bad after I came back from my run we have left over chocolate icing or in America you guys call it frosting from my son's birthday cake in a tub in the fridge and I love icing frosting it's my favorite part of a cake. I think cupcakes never have enough. Um, to me, why just eat the dry sponge? You need the icing. So we had, so when we asked the cake or frosted the cake, um, there was leftover. So I said to my, my boyfriend, don't throw it away. Like, let's put it in a Tupperware in the fridge. So the cake is now long gone, but I saw it in the fridge. So I took it out, let it soften. And when I got back from my jog walk run today, took a slice of fresh, soft, soft, soft white bread, you know, when it's fresh and it's soft. And I smeared peanut butter on, and then I took that chocolate icing. So usually I would do that with Nutella, and I used the chocolate icing, and then I ate that. And it was divine, divine, divine. So delicious. So not healthy. Please don't do it. <laughs> if you're on a weight loss journey, do not do it. But... The point is I did that and it's, it's unhealthy, but I only had one slice of bread, okay, with the top crust off because I don't really like the crust. And I stopped there, <laughs> whereas I think before, if I w wasn't running, I would have maybe had two or three slices. You know, you just, I think it's emotional eating. I've mentioned that before that I emotionally eat, but I got off topic again. And that's fine. I'm going to allow myself to get off topic because that's how humans have conversations. If, if we were sitting in a coffee shop or one-on-one -on -one with each other, you would say something, I would say something, we would veer and bounce and go all around. And I do, I enjoy that. If I enjoy a YouTuber and she goes here, there and everywhere, I actually enjoy it because I like to find out about her life, how she thinks, the little quirks. Don't you find it interesting when you hear about somebody's quirks like that, the weird breakfast, or you hear about, I don't know, I can't think now, their weird mark on their shoulder that they hate, but you think is nothing, or I don't know, something, whatever. Um, so anyway, going off topic, I think is okay. There is a topic I really want to talk about, and it's, I was going to do a whole video and title, maybe I'll still title it the same title I was thinking, but you know how if you see something a lot on TV, in a magazine, in social media, it becomes the trend. So in fashion, you see that happen. But I'm talking about maybe, let's take, for example, freckles. Okay. Let me have some coffee first. <laughs> and while I do that, you think about freckles. What got me thinking about this was I saw there's a range of, it's a beauty product range, um, makeup range, 
they've got like a pen it's a freckle pen where you can draw freckles on after you put your makeup on and they got they had an instagram post and everyone commented like oh my god what nonsense you know we, we spend all this time effort money and we go for ipl to remove all these like spots and now there's a pen to draw it back on and i was thinking about trends how like flawless skin is a thing but if you see models that have freckles with these beautiful freckled faces freckles look cool don't you think if you see a woman with big party plump lips that looks cool but then if you see a whole lot of gorgeous women but with thinner lips that looks cool if you see okay like we've all been programmed and brainwashed to see these long tall scrawny leggy models on the runway um, you get used to that look and that becomes aspirational but thankfully now we have the gym culture so now we all see these stocky muscular thick thick girls with their bubble butts and that looks cool so that's like a new look to aspire to and i was thinking you know when i was growing up no one wanted a bigger bum no one <laughs> and now the the big bubble butt that's become like the in thing not you know when i was growing up it's not like anyone wanted a flat bum but who's to say a flat bum maybe can't be in at some point maybe we all get tired of the bubble bum and we we swing and we we go for the flat bum look i don't know and that reminds me of joe coy's um his his netflix special i'm sure some of you guys have seen it where he talks about you know he's asian he says the asians their their back just goes into their bum <laughs> and I laughed and I thought that's so true. Asians and Caucasians, genetically or whatever it is, we just don't have rounded bums. We have to work so hard. I don't even know if Asians can get sort of bubble bums. And um, whereas Brazilians, Africans, Latinos, they have naturally a lot more of a rounded bum, and that is the aesthetic now, thanks to the Kardashians. And that's great. I think it's wonderful. We need variety. We don't want to just see stick thin, rail thin women. We want to see women of all shapes and sizes. I keep thinking variety is the spice of life. Variety is the spice of everything. Same with hair, you know. I got a perm back when curly hair was in. Do you remember in the 80s, everyone had like curly hair, big, big hair. And then in the 90s, it was the flat ironed, long, sleek, straight hair my hair naturally is pretty pretty straight oh excuse me with bleach it's a bit more frizzy but that's just a look doesn't mean curly hair is any worse doesn't mean straight hair is better it doesn't mean now i understand if you have like wild curly hair it can be unruly and hard to manage that's a whole different story if you're battling to cope with it i mean i have a, a very good friend of mine the one in stellenbosch she has red, thick, curly hair. I think her hair alone must weigh two kgs. I don't know. It's glorious. It's glorious. But I can see how she would battle with it. It's not easy to manage. I mean, my hair is easy. Okay, I have to wash it every day. I've got very, very, very oily roots. And so I do. I wash it every day. If I skip a day, it becomes very like limp and greasy from the root. And then ugh, it's just, it's gross. But her hair, it's, it's, it's like drop dead gorgeous. And it's no better or worse than my hair. It's just different hair, you know, and how we, we want, like now the fashion is the overfilled lip. And I mean, I've got lip filler. You guys know that. Let's not look at my lips now. <laughs> but I had a very, very thin top upper lip because when I was young, I smiled and it would disappear all you just saw was gums just gums and teeth and filler and i guess age as well your upper lip descends i didn't know that if i'd known that back then i would have just like left it um but filler has helped hide the gums so for me that's why i did filler it wasn't really to increase i mean i like the the i like the increased volume i, I won't lie do you like it and it kind of can give you a bit of a lip flip but yeah, I wouldn't say huge lips is any, 
anything more aspirational in my mind at least than than her lips you know you get gorgeous gorgeous like Jodie Foster she, she doesn't have big lips what a beautiful woman um who else who else is there back in the day Claudia Schiffer do you remember her um <laughs> I'm sure you guys do her lips were thin she uh, she was actually kind of weird looking not in an ugly way but weird as in you know kind of pale ghostly and yet she was a supermodel so beauty really is in the eye of the beholder and I always think if if we like whatever it is about you that you might not like let's say you've got wide hips and you hate your wide hips please own them rock them because you are an ambassador for wide hips for wide-hipped girls everywhere and I say this to myself actually about my thicker ankles I've made a video I will link to that in, in the description box below I hope I remember to do so every time I say I'm going to link it I've got to remember to go back and put the links um, again as I say it's just me doing this I'm a one-woman band and it's me doing it from home but I've hated my thick ankles my whole life and I know it stems from when a boy at school called me elephant legs and all I could think of was well the only difference between me and the other little girls is that they've got these thin thin delicate little ankles and mine are not so mine must look like tree stumps because I've got thick ankles and they they are not as shapely and that sticks with you you know these little comments stick with you and I've decided now I'm going to do my best <laughs> It's a work in progress, but do my best to rock my ankles because they're the only one they they are the only ones I've got. I can't trade my ankles in for somebody else's. And in fact, I'm going to admit something to you guys here. About three years ago, three years, I think it was when I was doing the profilo. Um and I was ashamed, even back then, I was a bit embarrassed to admit it. I did two rounds of something called Sicarelli, which is like fat dissolving injections in my ankles. Now, usually they do it to dissolve the double chin fat or the, the fat under the chin. And she said, you know, people have some success with that. So I was like, oh, you know, can we just do my ankles? Because even if I work out and I exercise, it's one part of my body that stays kind of fatty. I don't know. It, it just does anyway so we did that what a waste of money what a waste of money it did nothing nothing my best bet really is to get to a lean point which i'm not i'm not overweight but i'm not so lean right now get to a lean point where they look decent enough and, and just move on with my life i will always have bigger legs and that is okay it's okay i really am I'm, i actually really am coming to accept that You know, that is the beauty of being on YouTube is that the more I put myself out there, the, the less precious I feel about how I look, how I sound. I was very worried about my accent in the beginning. I thought, how will people overseas understand me? <laughs> and yet here you guys are from America, from New Zealand, from Australia, from... Um, I've had Portugal, I've had Hawaii, I've had, and I love hearing where you guys are from. I love it. I love it so much. It really makes me feel like I have pen pals or online pals all over the world. I love it. Um, I love how we, how I feel like women across the globe are just connected by our womanhood, by our feminine hearts. Anyway, where was I going with all of that? Um, uh, my ankles, my, oh, I don't know, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> but, oh yeah, with my accent. Uh, and, and how being on YouTube has made me less self-conscious. It really has. I mean, look to the point where I'm coming on camera, where my smile, I'm going to look into the viewfinder now, is still not, it's nearly there. But it's still not 100% there. You can see that there's a lameness over here that, Apparently, oh, apparently, 
the surgeon, the maxillofacial said, I must go get a vitamin B12 injection or a, a series of them that helps with nerve regeneration. I didn't know that, so, but I don't want to leave my house today. I'm, I'm home alone. The cleaning lady's not here. In South Africa, we have to call them domestic workers. <laughs> Um, just because it's not PC to say whatever, I don't know, say what we used to say, but um, I love her, she's amazing, but I do like the peace and quiet, so she's not here, and I have the peace and quiet to sit and record and talk to you guys, and I love talking to you guys, <laughs> and I hope it's not too boring, because I hope that as I talk, you can get on with your day, you can think about things, you know, some of you who are older may be over the whole body image issue thing. As I get older, I'm getting over it too. Um, but I've really noticed that the 40s, it is a time of transition. And when I entered my 40s, I didn't realize it because what, I've, what I'm seeing, at least, this is maybe I'm wrong, you can tell me, is in your teens, it's a time of transition. You're becoming a young woman, fertile, able to have babies and all that. You're transitioning to that. In your 20s and 30s, you are that. You are that young, fertile, beautiful, gorgeous woman. And then from your 40s, I think, to 50, it's another time of transition where slowly you are running out of estrogen. You are transitioning now to a menopausal or postmenopausal woman. So the 40s really is a time when, in my humble opinion, and I'm not there yet, so I'm just guessing, but it, it seems to be what's happening. We no longer are young. We are no longer as fertile. I mean, some of us are, and, and we'll still have babies like towards our late 40s. Um, but we are transitioning perimenopause. We are looking older. Things are getting wrinklier and saggier. And because we were young, and that's all we've known, all of this is like, oh, my God. And I really think that all these anti-aging fillers and Botox and, I don't know, serums and creams, they really are aimed at and are targeting. And the ones that are buying it are the women in their 40s. I really, that's how I'm starting to feel and think. Because I feel like I was very much in that i have so many videos on my channel about skincare treatments i've done the lasers ipl is really nice oh that's another thing i wanted to mention that brings me to it ipl is nice but you know i did it on my chest for the sun damage and sun damage is you know the darker spots and the whiter spots like here when you run let's see if you can see that and you lose pigment in a certain place now, I've always had these kind of um, beauty spots, but the more you're in the sun, the more they come out, the beauty spots, which is fine. I'm not a fan of them, but it's, it is what it is. But now these like white patches where the pigment just disappears and it like dies off, that, you know, I was like, what is going on there now? Now I've got to worry about this. So <laughs> IPL takes care of the, the beauty spots but it cannot, nothing can bring back pigment that's died off. And so then I was like terrified of going to the sun. And now at 46, I'm starting to think, look, I can't avoid the sun. I love running. I love the beach. You guys know this about me. I love the beach. It's my happy place. If you're a mountain girl, I love that for you. I really do. <laughs> if you're a winter person, enjoy it. Embrace it. It's not me. But I can understand. I mean, different strokes for different folks as well. But with all of this said, and that actually ties in with the topic I was talking about, who's to say that having, I don't know, what, what would you call it, like sun, I don't know if it's damaged, but sun speckled skin. So the skin looks a lot more spotty and freckly and it really is. It's like a speckled egg. It's like you've taken paint and splattered it all over your skin. And it looks like in watercolor, I do that to create like texture on a rock. It's beautiful. Who's to say that that is not actually beautiful? We are just not used to seeing it. And if you see more of that on influencers, on people on YouTube, 
if only people would show that on TV, if you saw that aged skin with all the, the beautiful sun, sun speckles, let's call them sun speckles, on their chest, and, and usually it happens on the chest, I don't know why, chest, shoulders, but on the arms, um, that could look really cool. It could, in fact, it could be something aspirational because, well, plain skin, boring, you know? <laughs> Who's to say we can't make that cool? I'm not saying skin cancer and damage, oh, even then, I mean, you know, whatever. And I'm not making light of it, I'm just saying, who, I, I don't think discoloration is necessarily bad. Yes, it's a sign you've been in the sun, but a friend of mine had cancer cut out of his face, and he was saying that the doctor said that it's not really, the sun does cause some, but the sun is not as big of a cause of skin cancer as we once thought it was. I'm not saying don't wear sunscreen now, <laughs> but um, I guess what I'm saying is we can't avoid the sun, especially if you enjoy it. And there is, there's a feeling that you get from being in the sun. There's a feeling I get that makes me feel alive. It makes me feel so happy, so happy. And I don't mind wearing sunscreen, but even through sunscreen, you get more of this, you know, you get my melasma gets darker. I get more freckly and speckly. And, and why not see it as beautiful? Why do we have to always aim for and lust after smooth, perfect, boring skin? <laughs> sure, I would like to have smooth, perfect, boring skin, but if that's not a possibility, I say we can rock sun-speckled skin too. And I know that this is something that affects um, us whiteies more than anyone with a darker skin tone. So why not just rock it? And I mean, I also saw a woman the other day in Starbucks. She had a very similar body shape to me, smaller on the top, a bit athletic looking, bigger legs. So I thought to myself, she must be a runner. She was a redhead with freckly skin, but you know, I could see she'd also been in the sun. That's also why I thought she was a runner. So her arms were freckly, but dark, lots and lots and lots of dark freckles. And it actually looked really cool. It looked really beautiful. And that tied into what I'm saying now. It got me thinking about making this video. And so I really, again, I say, we need to own who we are, what we have, our body shapes, our body types, our hair type, our noses, our, what else is the thing that most people don't like? Our butts, our knees, anything. So. I'm going to make cankles as cool as possible. <laughs> as I age, I'm going to make wrinkly knees cool as well. And, oh, wrinkly elbows as we get older. That's, that's another thing. Um, and just accept and embrace every change that happens. So I know, I know it's easy to say. It's so hard to do. It is so hard to do. But if you just remember it, think about it. Maybe after this video, just think, how can I make this thing that I don't like cool. And I'll refer you again, if you haven't seen Justine Bateman's, any of her videos on YouTube, well, usually she's being interviewed, where, and the one with Mayim Bialik, the girl from Big Bang, um, Justine Bateman was being interviewed by Mayim, and she has, you know, like we all do this, that gets looser with time, and she did that to her arm. This is Justine Bateman, I did that to her arm. She said, oh, you don't have an arm that does that? Um, well, then you just don't have a cool arm or something like that. Like, this is what a cool arm looks like. I want to embrace that mindset. I've said it before. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. So <laughs> I think with age, I will get there. Not to say that I will never do things to improve how I look. Because I also know myself. And I also know I live in modern Western society. But I think there's this mental balance that we can find and it really is it's the desiderata i think is it the desiderata or no the serenity prayer god give me the serenity to accept things i cannot change change the things i can or something and the wisdom to know the difference and i think that is so true in so many areas of life so many of these things that are cliches 
as my partner always says, they're cliches for a reason. I'm going to leave you with all those thoughts. I don't know what I'm going to title this video because this went everywhere. <laughs> Love you guys. See you in the next video. Bye.